Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar express, which is Marketing a Sustainable Food Business, Mackies of Scotland with Kareen Hayhow. If you're a university student watching today's webinar, you may want to sign up to CIM's Marketing Club. It'll keep you up to date with the latest trends, innovations and concepts in the marketing industry. All you need to do is take a photograph of the QR code you can see on screen and it will take you straight to the sign up page where you can fill out the form to receive regular updates. I'd now like to hand you over to Kareen Hayhow, Marketing Director of Mackies of Scotland, who is our guest speaker today. Over to you, Kareen. Thank you, Judith, and uh, thank you for the invitation to uh, speak today at lunchtime about Mackies of Scotland. Um, I'll begin with a quick introduction uh, about Mackies and our products, and then I'll talk about our sustainable activities. Um, I'll cover some of detail on the commercial benefits of renewable energy. And alongside the marketing or branding connected to the way we make ice cream. Then we should have time for some questions at the end. So we're a family business. We have 90 staff here on the Aberdeenshire farm. Um, Mackies have been farming here since 1912 and the current generation in charge are my brother Mac, who is the managing director, and sister Kirsten, who is the development director. And uh, the first of the next generation, my son Angus, has just joined us shown there with the dog, um, in a marketing role so that we are now a fifth generation family business making real dairy ice cream from Sky to Scoop here on the farm in Aberdeenshire. So Sky to Scoop, I'll just explain, is how we describe how Mackies make ice cream because we begin with the sky as the wind and the sun help provide us with the power from the turbines and the solar panels to run the ice cream dairy with renewable energy. And then again from the sky, the sun and the rain help us to grow the crops to feed the cows who produce the fresh milk and cream, uh, which we need to make real dairy ice cream for people to scoop and enjoy. So that's our sky to scoop process. And that's reflected in the way you know, we're vertically integrated and it's, it's, it's our culture to try and make everything that we can ourselves here on the farm. So that includes the fresh milk and cream from our own herd, the energy I've mentioned, and some other ingredients like honeycomb and sauces, um, as well as making our own packaging. Making our own packaging is quite unusual for a company of our size, and it's another example of our investment in technology, along with the more unusual at the start of the process shown there, that the cows milk themselves in our voluntary access milking unit. But working in this way also does give us a competitive advantage in that we are in control and we aim to improve quality, we increase efficiency and reduce reliance on supply chains while also adding environmental benefit. So for example, we cut the carbon miles in transport by making our own packaging. So while these background elements are interesting, I think, and can show you some of what makes us unique, it's uh, important from a marketing perspective to also focus on our products. It's the ice cream that's most important. All uh, real dairy ice cream, but traditional shown here is our best selling flavor. It was our first and it's remained largely unchanged since we began making ice cream in 1986. Traditional is uh, a little unusual because it's a natural creamy ice cream with no added flavoring, so not even vanilla. Um, the family sized one liter blue and cream tub has become iconic for Mackey's, at least here in Scotland. We recognise that this fresh, creamy taste uh, and that is the reason for traditional's enduring success. And it's one we continually emphasise in branding and market, marketing communications to explain and introduce what's different about Mackey's and our real dairy ice cream. We're kept busy here making about 13 million litres a year. And we sell our ice cream across the UK. You'll find it in all major supermarkets and uh, several independents, and we also export um, about 10% of our turnover, shipping ice cream mainly to Asia. So we do have a strong record of growth over the years, uh, and Mackey's Real Dairy Ice Cream is now well established as Scotland's number one, and it's number four take-home tub across the UK. Uh, we're quite an unusual um, company to be in the mix in that the ice cream is highly competitive, Mackies are in a challenging position within this wider market because you'll see that the top five brands shown here 
uh, include the big players like Walls, Parkdoor, Ben & Jerry's, who are owned by very large multinational companies like Unilever and General Mills. And also in the top five there, you'll see Kelly's, which does well, I think, to remain perceived as sounding British and family owned, like Mackey's, but it is in fact owned now by uh, one of Europe's biggest ice cream manufacturers, Freneri. Um, so the sale, uh, get out the violin, but the sale and the size and scale of resources available to these companies do give them some competitive advantages um, and the marketing budget for just one of the of these could probably and easily exceed the entire marketing budget for Mackey's for a decade. So on the one hand, we have to work and punch above our weight. And then on the other hand, we're working also uh, in the sector with the major retailers where space is uh, limited. And there, there are also the arrival of many smaller ice cream companies offering lovely niche local items, which might be exclusive in a particular area but that that just creates an additional squeeze on shelf space and listings uh, which has to be countered by emphasis um, and reasons to choose the quality of uh, products like Mackey's. So the fact that traditional has been able to get out there um, and grow is a testament to the strength consistency of the product. It would be it would be dangerous um, to rely too heavily on one product so we're always looking for the next um, product that we could make and hopefully one like traditional. We want to find opportunities uh, and of course uh, we like things that we can make ourselves here on the farm. Uh, we're small enough to be flexible but yet we have uh, the capacity to invest uh, in change and growth. So over the past 15 years we have diversified. So some examples like making crisps with a joint venture in 2009 and we also make chocolate bars and ice uh, here on the farm as well. Um, a more obvious diversification is that we opened our first ice cream parlour called Mackey's 19.2 in December 2018. And it's named after the distance from the farm to the parlour in Aberdeen city centre. Our aim there is really just to deliver a celebration of ice cream and our brand in our hometown. Uh, but it does also have some value for us as from a marketing perspective because we um, can test out new flavors and products and get immediate consumer feedback. Insight could be as easy as one Napoli selling quicker than another. Um, but we can also introduce our food service customers to Mackey's and, and have some fun with flavors and activity uh, on social and for PR content. So we do like our comfort food up here. So here's the Scots diet on a page with iron brew, pies and ice cream. Uh, but we're pleased to see Mackey's on this year's Scottish brand footprint report, uh, where we're placed as the sixth most popular Scottish brand in Scotland and we're the third fastest growing alongside Tenants and Tunnocks. And so now I've introduced a little bit Mackey's and the brand. Um, let's have a look at um, some of our green credentials and the marketing surrounding that. So being green is at the heart of Mackey's and our business, and, and it's reflected as one of the three elements in our company vision. This is and has been for um, at least 15 years to become a global brand from the greenest company in Britain created by people having fun. So it, it's our background, both as a family business and a farming business that makes it possible and natural for us to adopt a long-term approach um, and to worry about the world and, and it's important to uh, look after the land for future generations. A significant part of our environmental activity is focused on our investment in renewable energy. We were early adopters um, back in 1983. My dad installed a small wind turbine to power the old piggery um, and that making Mackey's one of the first UK companies to install a grid connected wind turbine. And then since then, a um, combination of advance, advancements in commercial wind technology and our growing rural business need for electricity has resulted in uh, it making business sense to continue with this with bigger and better models. So here in 2005, we were installing our first uh, 
which is a Vestas V52 850 kilowatt turbine. Uh, but that's about 40 metres tall with blades of 26 metres length. Uh, and that one was followed by two more in 2007. Uh, all things considered, roughly, you could say that to install and get them up and running costs around a million pounds each. Um, and despite the high capital cost, the long term view comes into play. We are also in a location which has plenty wind. Uh, and these three turbines generate 6.5 megawatt hours of electricity a year. That would mean that the, the payback is working out at around five years, and the turbine should work well for at least 25 years. These, these three are directly connected from the hillside at the back of the farm here to the ice cream dairy, so we are running the business on our own renewable energy. The benefits are trifold. Uh, one, we use our own free electricity from the wind. Two, we have income revenue from the surplus electricity that, that we are selling and exporting to the grid. Uh, and thirdly, we are protected uh, against um, fluctuations in energy market pricing, uh, which is obviously particularly important um, nowadays. To 2015, we installed our fourth and final turbine. He's named Dennis after our late sales director. Um, but at that time, we had had to install uh, a larger grid connection, also at some cost. But that uh, time, we only got planning permission for one final um, wind turbine. And so we added solar to the energy mix at the same time. Uh, at the time of installation, this 10-acre field with about 7,000 solar panels was the biggest in Scotland, albeit admittedly not for long. Uh, the payback period for solar is a bit longer, at about 10 or 11 years, uh, but they are also effective. So we have a new monitoring portal for the solar panels. And that said, for example, that since January this year, we have generated almost 1.5 million kilowatt hours, which is described as having saved 961 tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions or the equivalent of planting it's very precise, 76,903 trees. And these, these sorts of figures are also helpful um, for our social or PR when we're talking about renewable energy. And just to sum up on one page that we have a total capacity of about five megawatts. It is mostly from um, this wind and solar power, uh, but we have additional solar panels on the roof of the buyer. So that powers the, the milking machines I talked about. Uh, and we also have a biomass unit which heats the office and some housing on the farm. So with our full mix, we are generating over four and a half times the amount of power that we use. Uh, and it's on that basis that we describe ourselves as a climate positive company. We're running the business currently on about 60 to 70 percent with our renewable energy. And I'm going to come back uh, to that and show you the detail. Other activities and passing on the farm. Uh, also includes using our um, slurry as fertilizer, um, minimal till instead of plowing for soil care, uh, zero water waste, and about 10% of the 1,500-acre farm um, has been planted out in woodland. Here's a, a picture of the woodlands that includes an arboretum area, which I'd just like to show you. My mother planted this in her retirement. It has over 112 varieties of tree and about 150 trees or shrubs in total. But again, I think it's a reminder that doing the right thing for the environment, because trees are a carbon or can act as a carbon sink, can bring other benefits um, like the creation of a, just a beautiful place for future generations. Um, and it's looking particularly nice at this, this time of year. But back to the energy and the graph I mentioned. This one shows um, why having a mix of types of renewable energy works best or works well, because you can see that the orange colored areas, uh, the solar ed energy can boost the total energy being produced, filling the gaps, because it's all, obviously it's often sunny at the same time as being less windy. So I'm not sure how clear the graph will be for everyone on screen, but the, the blue here shows the amount of electricity that we 
purchase um, from the grid, which we would like to remove. Uh, yellow shows the electricity we generate and use on site. Uh, and you'll see that our power requirement has been uh, gradually increasing as we grow. Not dramatically, because we can work at efficiency on that, which I'll come back to too. And, and green um, is the wind energy produced and uh, here and then sold uh, by being exported to the grid. While orange is the solar power, also um, sold, exported to the grid. So you can see that on the graph that despite generating more, much more power than we need, there are still times, particularly in peak summer, when we're extra busy making ice cream that we still have to buy some power from the grid. That's, that's just because the amount being generated doesn't always match the demand at the exact time in the ice cream dairy. So that will continue until we're able to either store the electricity we generate so that we can use on demand or until we reduce our electricity usage. This one, um, we can look at it another way. It used to be my dad's favorite graph, um, partly because it shows the pathway towards becoming 100% uh, sufficient in renewable energy here. Uh, but also he saw it as a good reminder that this could be a map for Scotland or the UK uh, as a country. We have plenty of wind and it could be viewed as a, a template map for the country to move towards um, renewable energy. So I mentioned reducing power. What are we doing to reduce our energy use? We're in the final stages at the moment of our biggest ever single project. Uh, it's a 4.5 million pound investment in total uh, to install a low carbon refrigeration system. The system will run using ammonia, and that's a natural refrigerant gas with zero globing warming potential. And that's a big improvement because the old style commonly used refrigeration gases uh, are a, have a, a value of almost 4,000. We will also in this system be chilling with heat, um, using a biomass boiler to superheat and then uh, freeze via an, an absorption chiller. So this combination uh, of uh, technology, each component is tried and tested, but it's an innovative mix and is also and at this scale as well, and it's a first for Scotland. We estimate the effect of the new system is going to be an 80% reduction in our energy use and carbon emissions. So the environmental credentials of the new system have led to the award of a £2 million grant from the Scottish Government as part of its low carbon infrastructure transition program to help us carry out installation and create what should be an exemplar plant uh, for refrigeration for the Scottish food and drink industry. And then for us, we will have to, uh, um, it's up and running on ammonia already, but the biomass is being installed now. Um, but as we were already operating on 70% renewable energy, we would hope that the investment here will get us even closer to being 100% self-sufficient. And again, just in passing, it's a win-win situation. The environmental credentials um, uh, are outstanding, but they're accompanied by commercial benefit. The, the new equipment um, uh, is going to increase capacity for, uh, for enable us to grow, but also the new, more efficient, faster freezing creates smaller, rounder ice crystal particles. And that means that the ice cream, and we've proven by looking under the microscope at the local university, the ice cream uh, tastes even smoother and creamier. So sustainability, but the, we're all aware climate uh, action has become important for everyone. And most people feel that they have a role to play. I think it's interesting here that SMEs make up 99% of UK businesses by uh, by number, but and account for around half of the country's business-related emissions. So it's crucial that we um, also collectively take action. The changes required are also market-driven and uh, and will be. Uh, and the BRC reported recently 79% of consumers have already changed their purchasing behaviour based on environmental impact. Uh, so we we want to know more about it. We um, have two forms of carbon audit underway here because we need the facts. Um, we're working with Glasgow Caledonian University with a report that's intended to find a route to net zero for other SMEs, but using 
making recommendations for action and using Mackey's as a case study. And we have a second corporate carbon audit um, currently being carried out for us by an external consultancy. Um, and once we have both, we'll be able to accurately report our total corporate footprint, identify the, the biggest sources of, uh, of emissions, and then take action to reduce them. Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to benchmark ourselves against uh, our competitors, and I'm obviously hoping it's going to be a strong position for us to shout about and add values to customers um, choosing to buy our products. Look, sustainability, it's also important to our customers, um, the retailers, uh, and in turn, they're all working to reduce their carbon footprints and want they want suppliers with sustainable solutions to help them on that route. Uh, and this overall building pressure is, I would think, generally all going to help um, advance towards new, better technologies, helping to reduce overall carbon emissions, more recycling, less waste, increased energy storage capacity, and perhaps even help cows become cows become more environmentally friendly. What about our marketing? Um, our, our product uh, and company have been so concerned with going green for so long that it, it has been reflected in the marketing um, and some elements have happened accidentally. Uh, for example, I just realized that our one litre uh, blue and cream tub design while similar to the original, changed once um, about 10 years ago. And that's because we, um, related to renewable energy, we, the central tub there featuring windmills and a countryside theme was originally created as a limited additional promotional pack in partnership with um, our customer at the time, Good, Good Energy, a renewable energy provider company. And they offered with us uh, a year supply of renewable energy as a prize. However, we liked the tub design so much that we kept it. Uh, that was until this year when we undertook a brand refresh that included updating the logo and the tub design. This time the changes were made on the back of much deeper consumer research and thought, which I'll touch on later. The farthest, the tub on the right hand side is the uh, the, the new look tubs um, as they are um, now. Um, flip round to the back of that pack and you'll find a tempting introduction to Mackey's ice cream um, along with our climate positive icon uh, for the company. And the design again retains a nod to the renewables by showing the wind turbines. Our aim is to introduce our fresh creamy taste and natural ingredients while hinting at the environmental credentials um, as its ice cream made the, made the way it should be. Uh, later, I'll show you some of the consumer research which has led to this updated identity and the continued use of Sky to Scoop. Alongside the ice cream brand refresh, we've brought this more modern bright look to our range of chocolate bars. The new design here features an illustration based on the view from our farm. And you'll see again that uh, the turbines are, are included in there, reinforcing the underlying theme of sustainability and natural farm-made ingredients. Aki's chocolate is available uh, here in Scotland in the Scottish supermarkets, and our new website allows us to carry out e-commerce, which is for the first time for us, for direct sales to consumers. Um, it's also opened up new marketing opportunities uh, and can allow us to trial and have greater emphasis on programmatic digital marketing and direct marketing to our Friends of Mackey's email club. In trying to keep understanding what our consumers want and who they are, we, we benefit from feedback directly from our Friends of Mackey's, who are now about 70,000 strong, as well as having purchased data like um, from companies like Cantor World Panel and EPOS data from Nielsen, all helpful obviously in building profiles of our consumers and prospective consumers. And one question we're particularly interested in, and perhaps particularly today, is, is how much sustainability matters to them now and how much it's likely to matter to them in the future. It comes as no surprise um, that the most important factor when we ask our consumers 
uh, on how they choose good ice cream is the taste. So 10 years ago, we asked this question and we found that people want great taste, natural ingredients, and a smooth and creamy ice cream made with fresh milk and cream. Uh, not all ice creams are made with dairy ingredients, but that is another story. Um, just look at the back of packs. Um, but anyway, you'll see that um, at that time, made with renewable energy factor uh, came in at number 14. So here we are in 2019, we asked a similar question in our consumer research project conducted by Levercliff for us. Um, and it's interesting that the results are so similar, uh, but it's, it's, it's just not rocket science. The taste is always going to be the most important factor. People want creamy taste, their favorite flavors, good quality ingredients, perhaps the ease of scooping and good value. Curiously, uh, on ranking, the green factor this time described as environmentally friendly, came in at number 14 again. It certainly remains um, a value-added feel-good factor, while not necessarily the predominant reason to buy ice cream. Um, uh, and it's definitely, but it's definitely also of growing interest. So if we just look at the recent report by Cantor again, that shows a growing number of consumers who are described as eco-actives and eco-considerers, um, which are fairly self-explanatory on, on, on their categories. Um, and let alone the high percentage today, um, the report forecasts a dramatic increase over the next decade to becoming over 60% eco-active by 2030. So there, there's certainly a strong appetite out there for anything green in, in PR, um, and that, has seen a recent spike in the build-up up to uh, the week after next, COP26. Uh, we've had lots of coverage based on our environmental activities from the installation of our solar panels, which um, uh, we were looking at, and various milestones have been covered about uh, generating electricity or the new low carbon refrigeration unit and its installation. Um, over the years, we've won various awards one of the first I remember being back in 2007, partly because the, it had the rather grand title of being regional winner for Europe, Middle East and Africa uh, in the FT's inaugural event, environmental awards that year. And there have been lots of other um, sometimes quirky examples of PR activity, um, one of which uh, was um, Nissan asking us to provide ice cream based on our um, sky to scoop and um, environmental credentials uh, for the launch of their new electric van, which they adapted and made a zero emission ice cream van. Um, and the prototype van caused a lot of excitement, even made an appearance on Good Morning TV, uh, but sadly hasn't made it out onto the roads selling ice cream yet. Where are we now? I think whether or not sustainability, sustainability becomes a real reason to, to buy our ice cream. It's increasingly important to people in their lives and they want us to help them make good choices. Um, as it stands, however, I think the space is quite confused and overcrowded on this front at the moment. Uh, I, I read that there are over 400 accreditations available and these are only a small selection. Uh, in addition to the huge variety of accredi accreditation schemes and methods, the, the actual science behind it of determining a company's emissions and car calculating the carbon footprint is quite difficult. It's time consuming, can be expensive, uh, and, and some areas yet to be standardized. So I think these factors make it difficult for a small business to know how best to navigate addressing its actions and conveying them to, to consumers. Hopefully this is something, again, that we're going to just see improve over the next few years creating easier routes for clear and powerful messaging and benchmarking tools on sustainability. What of our challenges? Uh, we'll come back to making our own packaging. Plastic certainly getting a very bad press um, from whether it's David Attenborough and more recently our Prime Minister, uh, and that's helped everyone um, think it might all be all bad. I'm not sure it's as clear cut as this. We, um, making your own packaging here and having invested in that equipment 
uh, but it, it is recyclable and market research tells us that's one of the most important on-pack messages for consumers who are looking for ways to help make decisions to which to buy. Uh, there would, it would be more difficult for us to change our tubs to cardboard, but they're also not strong enough really to hold a one litre or more of ice cream. Um, and that's probably why in one respect, the 500 and mil and smaller tubs are made from cardboard. Uh, we hope recycling will improve uh, and there will be other, there just will be more techno technological advances with more biodegradable plastic, more use of recycled plastic and other ways that we can improve the choice we can give to our consumers. Um, another ponderable uh, for companies like ourselves at the moment, a big challenge related to the environment is whether dairy will see declining support as consumers move to um, increasingly choosing plant-based diet. It's too early to know what is really going to happen here. Younger people are more interested in plant-based options while dairy remains at the core of our product offerings. We've always been prepared to make changes and we would consider making a, a non-dairy product just as long as we're sure it tastes great. Um, our carbon audit will show that having cows causes high emissions, but again, there are some innovations on the way, and UK dairy cows are some of the most climate friendly in the world. Our view, of course, of couldn't leave that slide without saying of continuing to eat dairy would be its great creamy taste, source of nutritional ingredients, and when found in real real ice cream, it's elevated to being delicious and happy. So what, what next? Our business plan has a section called BHAGS, which stands for Big Hairy Audacious Goals. Uh, it's, uh, it's just because we're always looking for something else, something new and fun challenges to take on. Our carbon, our carbon audit and the, the new low carbon refrigeration project are our current major projects um, and with a commitment to continuing to invest like this, improve and grow. That's, that's an approach which proves our intent, I think, to keep our minds open and we'll work onwards, hopefully in passing become 100% self-sufficient in renewable energy as we work our way along towards our vision. I think to state the obvious that you have to, you have to act to be sustainable and then you can work on the marketing of that value added background to your product. Uh, that's enough from me. Thank you for your attention. I hope some of it was interesting. Uh, Judith is now going to come back and join us and help field any questions that you may have. We're now going to have a short Q&A session. Um, so first question, um, does your research show that consumers are prepared to pay more for greener ice cream products? And how, how do, and, and just to combine with another question from another questioner, um, how does how does it compare with your competitors? Are you able to see any comparisons on on price? The, it is an interesting one. I, um, I think on um, it's also a tricky one to get right in market research and find out and ask what people would be willing to pay for various. Um, you might profess to be willing to pay more to do the right thing than you do in reality. So when it comes down to people in store faced with two options, um, one sustainable pack for an example and the other then um, one, one research question we did came out with those being very almost identical. Um, again, not done by us, but I see that there is some research saying that people are willing to pay more to to get the right products and make the right choices. That's going to come. It's going to come, isn't it, to this increasing number of the eco actives, if you like, who are willing to make the effort and pay a little more to help move to the the more environmental cost. Um, for us. Out, you know, out there, it's it's always a balance too, and that we are um, we're managing to produce a, a, a product that we sometimes call an affordable luxury, but um, a one liter version, which isn't as expensive as our um, a couple of our 500 mil luxury competitors, for example.
Okay. So I, um, I was trying to say, I'm not sure. People will definitely say they will, and some people will. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends but, who's uh, asking them. <laughs> to, you know, pressure to keep keep the keep the cost down. Yeah. So apart from the marketing of the, the actual product, um, what activities on the farming side have Mackie's taken to decrease admissions? I was quite interested when you described the cows as climate friendly. Um, maybe you could say a little bit more about the farming side rather than the wind turbines and the. Um, yeah, well, solar I say um, climate friendly. Um, I'm referring to Russell of Papers while I look for the the dairy. The Dairy Federation have um, information about um, the dairy, the UK dairy farm, um, and so in some respects, they, their their figure, for example, was that there are 278 million dairy cows in the world, and if they were all um, being cared for and milked efficiently uh, uh, in the way in the UK dairy cow industry is, then they would need 76 million of them to produce the same amount of milk. It's maybe a slightly odd figure to have, but they, it, it's, it's all things are relative. I think that um, agriculture has about 3% of the total UK emissions and that livestock and dairy, and because of cows, do have emissions. There are lots of, there are lots of things happening that we can change things in their diet, which we have tried. And we're looking at uh, another company who using nitrogen can help reduce the emissions from waste from the slurry. Um, they, they, um, there, there isn't a, an immediate answer to what's a, in some ways a natural process from the, from the cows and their digestive systems, which does cause emissions at the moment. Right. On the farm, the other bit, the land use being a carbon sink and our minimal till is, is taking care of that, of the biodiversity, the carbon rich area on the top level of the soil. Um, we've got a question now um, on your marketing strategy. Do you alter it um, depending where you're selling in different parts of the UK? Um, so in England, say, compared to Scotland? Um, yes. Are we um, international? <laughs> <laughs> the, and it's interesting because uh, actually to touch on the international side, the, the exporting side is relying, marketing is relying on uh, the exact that we we make the same products, tell the same story, and they like and appreciate the same fresh, creamy, made on the farm, um, you know, consistent quality of ice cream, and probably touched with that the the enviable, if you like, reputation that Scotland has for um, green hills, nature, environment, and 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 good food and drink. But coming back to England and Scotland, yes, we would love to have the same availability in England as we do in Scotland. We have um, probably just just over half our sales perhaps in, uh, in England, so a much um, higher rate and, and, and people can find our whole selection of flavours in Scotland and so less so down south and that means that our single traditional tub, the one I'm showing you, is there on its own in England. So we have to, we've, some of our research is based on talking to consumers in England to find out what they do or don't know about Mackey's and whether we're managing to deliver um, to show the difference if it's coming down to just the pack as well as um, looking at our marketing campaigns and picking the profile for our customers and um, with the likes of the you know, programmatic and Facebook and whatever to try and reach people and introduce them to Mackey's. So it is a, it's something we work at to try and uh, increase sales there and, and bring more ice cream flavours as well. Yeah, and and, uh, and another question, um, during the pandemic, have you had to change your approach? Um, and I'm sort of thinking you, you talked earlier about um, getting shelf space in supermarkets. Has the, the, the shift um, potentially, whether it's shorter term or longer term, to online shopping, does that impact on the way that you would uh, see your sales? The, yes, it works. And I'm not sure whether it was three questions in there, was it? <laughs> um, <laughs> the change in, in the pandemic. So. Yeah. The, uh, well, over the pandemic, we were we were um, touch wood. We were very fortunate in that we were able and did manage to keep working. 
um, once over the initial um, very uncertain time and uh, and also for consumers after that initial period they're at home and actually ice cream as a small treat were one of the things that they kept buying and wanted to buy more of so and our team managed to keep uh, working through through the lockdown so that actually increased demand for ice um, ice cream um, separately yes the marketing our messaging we we reacted a bit i think to um in in would have been 2020 19 into 2020 where we focused on um simple pleasures um because that was how people were if they were um, of course to stay at home things from gardening to reading a book to having an ice cream or a picnic all became more important so we changed the marketing message a bit like that um on this last year discover summer discover mackies and dairy is again related to hopefully the um hopefully it might continue but for more freedom for everyone i'm getting back out and about um i've forgotten what the third part of the question was oh, i think i think you've covered it there um um one question we've had is are you selling surplus solar power um that you generate um and what rates are you able to get for that or do you manage to use it all and have to just top up no as i showed you on the graph we are selling um the solar and power from mostly from the the fourth turbine um marketing director i'm going to admit i don't know the current rate that we get for selling electricity but if the person wants to um contact me through yourselves or direct i can i can find that out okay thanks and i think we've got time for one more question are you planning to open any more ice cream parlors anywhere else well, well, we'll all go and visit when we're in Aberdeen, obviously, but can we have some a bit come, nearer? <laughs> come to Aberdeen, come to Aberdeen. Um, the, I like calling it our first ice cream parlour. So um, it's, it's been very interesting. It's a lot of learning to for ourselves to run our own um, food service or um, ice cream parlour with, you know, cafe and whatever. Um, so we're if we can um prove that as a concept then yes it, it, it would be interesting to um try it again um we don't have one lined up right now okay well thanks that's excellent um kareen we've had some good questions there from the viewers um i don't know about anybody else but i'm going to nip out and try and buy some mackie's ice creams to enjoy later um so that's all we have time for for our webinar today i'd like to say thanks to kareen for her presentation and to cim scotland for organizing the webinar we do hope you found it interesting and worthwhile our next webinar express um, is Kantar, who we've mentioned, um, are delivering the next one, which is what is next for the food and drink sector. We've had a slight change of date there for anybody who's already booked just to make a note of. The date will now be Friday the 12th of November and it will be at 1pm and the event has been hosted by our sector interest group um, for food, drink and agriculture. You'll find further details of that listed on the events page on the CIM website where you'll also be able to register for the session. So on behalf of CIM, thank you once again, Kareen, for a really good presentation. And thank you to all that joined us. We hope that you enjoy the rest of your day and we look forward to welcoming you again at our webinars in the near future. Goodbye.